failure. Sir Joey, are you are there? You there? Are you there, Sir Joey? Sir Joey Duque? Oh, wait, Sir let Joey. me check. Where is he? Is he still? Maybe because he's also on the road. Yeah, so Siguro, we can add him later on. Like if, yes, okay. Either if um you're still around or kasi parang may uh, soccer ano ba yun yung sports yung anak ni Sir Joey kung parang hindi ko na siya makita nakikita pa ba natin si Sir Joey sa Hold on let me check Wala na si Sir Joey uh, Oh wala na yeah yeah he left left okay, okay so maybe we can start with uh, introducing Dr. Um, Raymond So yeah it's 2:30 good afternoon again And yeah so eto na so our honorable speaker is one of the first certified functional medicine practitioner in Southeast Asia and first one to undergo mentorship in San Diego, California. He has been a lecturer and educator for eight years in Southeast Asia. And so, not only that, Nikki, he also specializes as a medical detective on complex chronic management where he went special training in autism autoimmune disease, and neuroplasticity. And he has been an educator in Southeast Asia for more than eight years and has lectured in over 400 venues across the region. He co-founded organizations and companies that develop and deliver nutrition and lifestyle education and implementation programs helping bridge the scientific knowledge gap between patients and practitioner communities across all socioeconomic classes. While undergoing training and a few years after, he helped lead a partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine to develop the functional med med medicine practice in Southeast Asia and Pacific, successfully introducing the practice to the region and over 300 medical practitioners. And can you imagine 10,000 patients? Yes. And apart, yeah, apart from that, his clinical practice, Dr. Raymond currently works as a technical advisor and consultant to government, non-government and corporate organizations under the categories of nutrition, lifestyle change, integrative health and wellness projects. And he hopes to see the end of really chronic illness in our region. We'll not let them wait, Nikki. Okay, without further ado, we introduce Dr. Raymond and Joseph Escalona. <laughs> So, hello po. Kamusta po, Dr. Raymond? Hi, Dr. Nikki. Hello. Hi, Ma'am Queenie. Good afternoon to everyone. <clears throat> um, thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, sige, I think we can start. Or I think I saw Sir Joey come into the oh, room. Oh, yes. Welcome back, Sir Joey. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we want him to? I think there's a segment for Sir Joey rin kasi. Yeah, yeah, opo. Um, Sir Joey, and dyan po kayo. Maybe you can, before Dr. Raymond starts with his lecture, yes. do you want to... Uh, do your testimony now. Yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sansana, I just uh, drove in. <laughs> Galing kaming uh, Cavite, no? Uh, my son, siguro, nag sayang kanina nasa car kami with my son, no? si Jet. Actually, Jet uh, uh, is a patient of Dr. Raymond no? for quite some time, I think four years ago. No? Jet is now uh, 10, turning 11. So, uh, um, four years ago, so that was uh, 2018, I think before the pandemic. Um, uh, actually, Jet has, a, uh, has his ASD detected when he was uh, two years old. So, so that was uh, four years before okay, Dr. Raymond. No? Then we... We attended different, you know, uh, like what you guys are doing, no? Yeah. We attended different, uh, uh, what's this, interventions, no? As advised by our, our, our ped, uh, uh, dev, development pediatrician. Afterwards, after doing this uh, aggressively, we met with uh, Dr. Raymond. Uh, I, uh, then after, then we did all of his suggestions and miraculously, uh, with this uh, knowledge and his uh, 
and his uh, techniques, no? And, uh, and with God's provision, after four years, uh, sample di different situations lahat tayo, yet uh, almost completely recovered. Yeah, so hopefully, na what happened to us can happen to all of you guys there. No? So ako, let's, 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 let's listen to Dr. Raymond and his uh, knowledge about uh, ito, uh, autism spectrum. And let's listen to him and understand what he's going to tell us. Kasi I think maraming matutulungan dito. So, uh, yun. So, Jet, hi, wala siya dito kanina. He, he's with us in the car. Pero, grabe yung naitulong sa amin. So, eight years kami. First, last, la, la, like what I said earlier, first four years namin was more on the intervention, uh, the regular intervention. Then after four years, we din, um, yun nga, yung six years old na si Jet, six, ginawa na namin tong kay, kay Dr. Raymond. With in functional medicine. And uh, yeah, again, thank you, Doc Raymond, for helping us, uh, our family, and for first jet. Thank you, Clever Got Philippines, no, for for having us also and uh, for uh, uh, giving me the, the time to share with you uh, 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 our testimony. Anyway, yun lang po, uh, maybe Jet can missing it in a while. But no lie, he's now preparing for his soccer. Thank you all. Have a great day. Listen to Doc Ed and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Joey. Thank you, Sir Joey. Thank you, Sir Joey. Thank you, Sir Joey. I'm so, uh, sorry, Dr. Raymond. Before we start, sure. paano po kaya natin ma FB Live to, Facebook Live, since uh -huh. meron po tayong other, uh, yung the rest na 23 na nag-register. Uh, I, I can open it po sa Facebook ko. And then, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Share to sa inyo. Opo, please share the link to us. Thank you so much. Sige po. Let's, let's start it now. Uh, okay. But informal naman po yung afternoon natin. Hindi naman to super formal na event. So, uh, request lang po na everyone keeps the mic muted when we start the lecture. Uh, if you have questions po, just write down yung, ano, yung question so we can answer it naman. Um, later. Ipapublic ko po yung share sa Facebook. So Ay, nako. Maraming salamat. You can, ano, siguro. I think, ito. <clears throat> this should be okay na. Uh, go live. Share to timelines. Ayan po. <clears throat> so, siguro po, it's a little background, Len. Bakit po na <laughs> I reached out, Ren, and I reached out to sila, Sir Joey. Um, <clears throat> ito pong past, tong past four months, the first four months of the year, uh, in my own clinical practice po, uh, I started to see a lot more cases of autism. Um, I feel it's because of the pandemic, no? A lot of the reasons are, kasi po may mga mommies na nabuntis or nanganak during the lockdown period. And alam natin that there are many effects of nutrition and stress. Siyempre, locked na sa bahay lang tayo, poor movement. And they started to create a wave of poor development sa mga children. So, um, <clears throat> I would just like to, uh, parang nag-reach out po ako kasi sabi ko, a lot of the kids I'm seeing now, marami nang pwede gawin even before they go to me. Diba? Pwede na mag-change ng food, pwede na mag-try ng different therapies, pwede na mag-try ng different treatment. Para pagdating sa akin, <clears throat> um, yung basics are covered na. So, ang objective po natin for today's session is uh, malaman ng nyo, nyo po kayong mga parents kung ano yung mga basics that we espouse sa clinic. Para ngayon pa lang, di ba, meron na kayong mga pwedeng magawa. And at the end of the day po, basta you do good basics, the health of your child will always improve. Whether or not it will improve the symptoms of autism or developmental delay, it will make them healthier from the core. So, kung meron sila mga rashes, makiklear yun. Kung meron sila mga symptoms, makiklear yun. So, <clears throat> let's, ano, let's, let's uh, open our minds po today and I hope uh, maging patient lang tayo kasi I'll be speaking in Taglish the whole day po. Um, did you see na po the video sa Facebook page ko? Hold on. The Facebook page. I-share. Try ko siya i-share sa... Oh yeah, this one. Okay, sharing the group. Ayan, it's on my profile. Okay. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> yes, Doc. Thank you so much. All right, sige, we're live. Sige po, I think we can start. So, uh, good afternoon again to everyone. Um, 
My name is Dr. Raymond Escalona. Uh, I've been teaching for the past eight years. <laughs> I've been I was very privileged po to uh, start doing this work early on. Uh, <clears throat> tapos yung kwento ko po is actually I have a godson who was delayed. He was six years old and he was the age of three at the time. So when I was training sa US po, uh, my family talked to me and asked me, uh, RJ nickname ko kasi sa family. RJ, meron ba tayong malalaman dyan para matulungan siya? <clears throat> so I asked my mentor at the time, I, we were working with autoimmune disease, mga lupus, inflammatory bowel disease. We were the last line referral sa San Diego. Um, my mentor, Dr. Lisa Perry said, uh, yes, we can do a lot of things for kids with autism. In fact, that's one of the conditions that functional medicine can really help with. So I started to learn what we, we had to do. We fixed the food. Uh, thankfully, ngayon, he is now uh, eight years old. Uh, back to normal school na rin po siya. Nahabol namin yung development from three na angat namin all the way to at par. But it took time po, no? So from six, eight siya ngayon, <clears throat> or nine na siya ngayon. So it took three years rin to get him on par. Uh, different reasons for different kids. And today, you're going to see the different um, models po, kunwari, that, or that we try to look for sa mga kids. What are the different patterns of, of issues that we have to deal with? So, okay, with that, let's start na siguro. Um, I always have to share affiliations no, para lang makita niyo yung mga bias ko rin as I lecture. Uh, we do run a company locally called Nutrigineering. Uh, we bring in supplements uh, that are not available in the market um, that we use for patients. It just helps us in the clinic back end. Uh, if we wait for the big players to bring them in, hindi, hindi dumadating yung yung mga produkto kasi it's too small a market for them to bring in. Uh, <clears throat> we do nutrition, lifestyle, change education programs for communities. And uh, I do teach for a supplement company called Metagenics. Okay. <clears throat> um, our main objectives for today are as follows. Um, we're going to discuss how we do a functional assessment of autism spectrum or developmental delay or disability. We are going to look at how do we then initiate or start yung personalized multi-model program for kids. Most of the programs will always be single target programs. We're gonna just going to do therapy or we'll do this nutrient therapy. How do we make a, a multi-model program na it will hit all the specific needs at the same time? Um, our functional concerns, function meaning their ability to do things, no? um, <clears throat> will be, uh, to answer today will be, what truly is the gut-brain axis? How does that work? Um, how does the immune system play a part? Bo? So yung immune system, and how does it play a part in brain development? Uh, what is the mitochondria? Uh, what is mitochondrial function? How does that Im implicate yung, or, imp or how does that create change sa brain? And how does that improve function? And finally, uh, ano ba tong detox na to? The scientific term is called biotransformation and elimination. Um, <clears throat> how does that work and why does that why is that important for kids uh, with this condition? So uh, to be able to tell you a, a very good story, let's start with a case. No? Um, this is a child that I had the privilege of treating when the pandemic started, um, 2020. So initials are SP. She's a five-year-old female. Uh, ngayon, yung parents niya wanted to have a baby talaga. <clears throat> However, uh, hindi sila na bless early on and nahirapan sila to conceive a baby. And so at 45 years old, um, dun po na buntis yung mom. So ano siya, elderly mo mother siya na first time. <clears throat> because of the elderly uh, event of the pregnancy, uh, binigyan siyang steroid treatment or corticosteroids to make the lungs mature. And that had an impact on the baby at the time. Uh, SP was born at 38 weeks, so good, good maturation naman. Uh, born cesarean section and then breastfed for 10 days tapos bottle fed na afterwards. No complications after birth. When SP was starting to grow up, so syempre five years old lang po yung baby natin. No? So uh, at less than 10 months, nanotis nila ang dami niyang mga eczema. So mga nagbo-bloat yung chan niya all the time. <clears throat> and then at one year old, nanotis nila na yung eye contact parang hindi, hindi permis. Parang nagmo-move-move yung eye contact ng, ng baby. At less than three years old, they sought a consult with a developmental pediatrician. And then, yung nga, sabi ng DevPeds, well, your, your child has global developmental delay. Um, yung social skills niya, two years old lang. Language skills are two years old. Hand-eye coordination, one year, ten months. Performance is two, month, two years and eight months. Locomotor skills at three years old. And then, she skipped the crawling stage with no 
good core strength or and poor balance at the same time. <clears throat> At five years old, um, they try to put her into classes and therapy, um, <clears throat> but she doesn't listen. She doesn't know how to play with toys, uh, could not really express herself. She had dark circles under her eyes. She's very hypersensitive to mga sound, to sight. So, nagugulo siya pag mga cars na dumadaan. Uh, other symptoms that were not related to her uh, developmental diagnosis was that uh, she was known to be an insomniac. So her sleeping patterns were very bad. Sipunin siya or rhinitis, laging nagsisneeze, hatching na hatching. Uh, she had maraming mga pantal, mga rashes. Constipated siya, so sobrang sama nung bowel movement. Pag umutot siya, mabaho yung, yung utot niya. Binge eating siya, tapos parang hindi siya makastop kumain ng sugar and carbohydrates. Okay, now stop there. <clears throat> so for all of our patients po, to know how therapies or interventions are working, we have to do a type of assessment. And this is the basic one we do called the ATEC, Autism Treatment Evaluation Checklist. You can search for this online and there's a questionnaire that you answer. Then iterate yung skills or symptoms mo on the number. <clears throat> so language 10, sociability 11, sensory skills 15, physical 15. <clears throat> we want scores that are very, very low. Very low scores means uh, normal child, walang symptoms. High scores means, um, or higher, the higher the score, the more dysfunction for the child. We also use a document, uh, which we were trained in from the Institute of Functional Medicine called the Symptoms Questionnaire. <clears throat> and the Symptoms Questionnaire is a rated scale. As, ano to? Yung parents will answer this. So may symptoms ka ba sa head? May symptoms ka ba sa eyes? Iso score lang yung mga symptoms. I'll show you the page again before. Notice nyo po dun sa left side ng photo natin, dun sa head, May mga uh, symptoms dyan, no? headache, faintness, dizziness, insomnia. So, error rate from 0 to 4 ng parents or ng patient yun. Then, the higher the score, the more symptoms or the more dysfunction na, na experience ng ano natin, ng patient natin. <clears throat> okay, so we also build what we call medical timelines. Uh, very different po kami kumuha ng history from other physicians kasi uh, the first consult an hour and a half, we ask you everything, <laughs> how you were born, <laughs> Uh, ano po nangyari from zero years old all the way to today and all of the details in between. In this page in front of you, notice po dun sa white space natin underneath. These are all the symptoms that um, SP had had. Tapos nun, I put it po in chronologic order based dun sa age niya. So the age is on the arrow. So nung before 10 months old, notice there my eczema, my bloating, my sipon, mucus, uh, poor sleep at night, something was off na daw sa behavior. At one year old, right there, you can see poor eye contact. <clears throat> then at 1.7 years old, dun na pa dev beds consult, and then the story goes on moving forward. Dun sa different segments, on the left side of the page, you'll see yung birth history. Dun sa middle part ng page, you'll see mga triggering events. Uh, <clears throat> dun, sa, dun sa development niya. And then sa pinaka top part, our lifestyle, mga food na kinakain niya, and other types of mga exposures. Right, so... We're talking about the brain today. Uh, our brains have different parts, diba? So here you can see the <clears throat> anatomic parts called the thalamus, hypothalamus, and all those other parts. <clears throat> but the brain itself also can be mapped according to function. So dito po sa frontal cortex, makita nyo meron tayong um, motor control na alagay dyan. Dito sa bendang gitna, you have touch and pressure. Hanggang dito sa likod, you have vision. So different parts of the brain um, relate to different functions ng children natin. <clears throat> but if we take a part of the brain po and put it under the microscope, this is what we'll see. We'll see what we call the brain cell or the neuron. Notice nyo, para siyang jellyfish, di ba? <laughs> Parang may mga galamay. So one cell na may mahabang, mahabang tail, tas may ano, meron siyang galamay doon sa dulo. <clears throat> Ito pong neuron na to, how it functions is it creates energy and it passes it on parang telephone pole to the next neuron. When two neurons are able to connect, they create function that way. So, <clears throat> um, what produces energy sa loob ng neuron is called the mitochondria. If you remember, no high school tayo, um, meron tayong tatawag na mitochondria or tawag natin dyan, the powerhouse of the cell. Parang yung mga power plant o mga battery sa loob ng neurons natin. <clears throat> Pag yung mitochondria, maganda yung pag-produce ng energy, then the brain can start to fire appropriately. There's a lot of energy for learning and development. So the question then that would be the next to answer would be, what are the key functions or what do we need to understand 
para makaproduce tayo ng better brain development or neuroplasticity. So <clears throat> initially, what we're seeing now is that for a brain to develop, dapat may planner. Dapat meron tayong uh, city officer na sabi niya dun sa brain ng child, okay, you have to develop this segment, this segment, this segment, and this segment. <clears throat> Once um, there is an order for the brain to be built, we then have to use raw materials inside the body. So um, notice po, di ba, yung food na kinakain natin, meron yung proteins, meron tayong healthy fats, meron tayong vitamins and minerals. All these food components become the building blocks of the brain cells. So in certain cases po, um, of children, kahit na therapy tayo ng therapy, if there's a nutritional deficiency, wala siyang mabibuild na parts ng brain kasi wala kang raw materials. Parang bahay, uh, kahit gustong gusto magpatayo ng bahay, meron ka ng blueprints ng bahay, if wala kang mga materials, wala kang concrete, wala kang hollow block, hindi mo magagawa yung bahay. So same thing po yung concept na yun sa loob ng body ng tao. <clears throat> also, no, no po na yung katawan natin also uh, experiences different trauma or different attacks to it. So itong photo ko dyan, parang yung city, di ba, kinidlat yung part ng city, dito sa next, nasunog yung part ng city, dito sa next, uh, binaha or na-flood yung part ng city, <clears throat> in the next one, nasira yung building, the brain also functions that way. So there are factors pala that, the, that a person can get exposed to that will start to destroy different parts of the brain. <clears throat> Kaya pala there are some kids where natututo po sila on how to speak or how to do certain tasks, but after a few weeks or months, nawawala na naman yung ability. We call that regression. Regression types of developmental disability are in kids who have something na nasisira yung brain nila consistently. So if we then pinpoint ano yung reason but nasisira yung brain, then we can stop the regression from happening. Then the brain can start to develop appropriately over a period of time. All right. So what are the key functions um, doing the understanding neuroplasticity? I mentioned dun sa mga photos na as we, I told you the story of the brain, some someone has to tell the brain to grow and develop, right? Uh, the best one is to do uh, stimulation. So mga teacher, OT, PT, speech. Um, <clears throat> sadly, if you do a lot of YouTube, uh, hindi siya good stimulation sa brain. So uh, screen time is not good stimulation. But if they play with toys, that's good stimulation. And let's say na stimulate na natin yung brain. The second component to build the brain would be to have uh, um, <clears throat> good building blocks or materials of the cell. So magandang nutritional status. And the third is that we have to make sure hindi na nasisira yung parts of the brain, which are looking for and treating reasons for inflammation or toxic load. Okay, mamaya, we'll discuss that. <clears throat> I learned this a um, couple of years ago in 2017 from a very, very good doctor from San Diego. Uh, her name is Dr. Suzanne Go. Um, she's a like, pediatric neurologist who works with children on the spectrum. And what she said was that um, how developmental disability is starting to be viewed as now in her theory is that the whole brain of the child wants to develop and grow. Diba? Wala namang brain, wala namang body na ayaw mag-grow and develop. However, for one reason or another, meron tayong low-grade inflammation or pamamaga from somewhere within the body that's affecting the brain. So, dun sa parts ng walang inflammation, those are the functions of the child na nare-retain. So, for example, <clears throat> um, namamaga yung brain, so natamaan yung part where they can speak. Um, that area lang yung tatamaan, so yun yung may delay. The other parts of the brain grow and develop normally like other kids. <clears throat> but where do, do we see this though in uh, published literature? So I, as I lecture, you'll notice na I'm going to keep showing you mga evidence bases. So these are all peer-reviewed uh, journal articles. Para you know na hindi ko in-invento <laughs> But here's a good paper showing that. <clears throat> um, this was published in Frontiers in Neurology. It has the title, What Does Immunology Have to Do with Normal Brain Development? And the <clears throat> uh, Pathophysiology Underlying Tourette's and um, Tourette's Radius. I think may I unmute. Can you ask okay. Okay, please keep your mics muted. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay. So, um, medyo technical, no? but I'll explain this, how this works later on. Basically, the paper says that the cellular and molecular processes that, that constitute our immune system are crucial to normal brain development. 
and the formation of um, brain circuits when the child is developing. I'll show you the photo in the next slide. Yun pala, as the child starts to grow and develop in the womb and within the first year of life, <clears throat> um, as the brain starts to develop, the immune system develops at the same time as the brain. So if at the time that the child is developing, yung immune system niya pala is not developing appropriately or meron siya mga infection na kalaban, it has in an effect on brain development at the same time. Uh, <clears throat> and so here's another paper showing when we have um, good development of the brain on the left side, walang issue dun sa imbalance of the immune cells. Ito medyo scientific is good masyado, but uh, <clears throat> when we have um, children who have certain infections or they're eating foods na they're having a hard time to digest, the brain development gets altered because the immune system starts to activate too much during that period of time. So let's go back to SP. I showed you this timeline before. Um, let's go circle out things that are giving us an idea na parang before pa, she had an issue with the immune system. Well, we know that if a child is born by a cesarean section, um, the, because dumadaan sila hindi dun sa vaginal canal, there's less back, healthy bacteria that is put to the baby. Um, <clears throat> cesarean section delivery plus formula milk most of her life starts to create a lower healthy bacteria development inside her and that leads to poor immune function. Notice na right away, within the first um, year of life, meron na tayong mga signs of immune dysfunction. Symptoms of sipon, symptoms of skin rash eczema, symptoms of uh, bloating sa stomach. These are early signs that there's something wrong and that her body is starting to produce inflammation, which then, we know now, can affect the brain pala at that same time. Okay, <clears throat> um, so if inflammation is the thing that we have to deal with, diba? we have to look for where it comes from. Paano ba, paano ba namamaga yung katawa ng tao? Where does it come from? Well, um, through years of research uh, by other scientists, uh, this, we've seen that when we start to consume food, pala, <clears throat> uh, we break down the food within our digestive system. And as we break down that food, it starts to feed different bacteria in our bodies and the bacteria will start to signal our immune system um, whether to, to trigger it or to turn on or to turn off. And then we, we clear out the food. Um, the researchers have found out that our entire digestive system is home pala to 70% of our immune system. So, <clears throat> for example, you want to fight the flu, you want to fight COVID, you want to fight some type of virus or bacteria, it all starts in the digestive tract. If you eat the wrong types of food, we will foster the development of unhealthy bacteria, which will lead to poor immune function in the long run. Same is true for kids. When kids are given um, certain foods that are sugary, processed, uh, have additives, that will start to espouse the growth of poor bacteria, and that will start to turn on the inflammation in the body. <clears throat> and so, um, what do we know from the published literature? Well, we know that it's been published that if a child has factors that promote the growth of healthy bacteria, they don't develop allergies or autoimmune diseases. So what are the promoters? Well, if we give children probiotics, if we give the moms who are pregnant probiotics, if we do vaginal delivery, if we do vaginal swabbing, wherein you, when they give birth, kung CS talaga, you swab the vaginal area as you put it in the cheeks or the nose of the baby, or if we breastfeed, that will foster the growth of healthy bacteria pala in the kids. <clears throat> and that will reduce the risk later on as they grow up of asthma, atopic dermatitis, type 1 diabetes, and digestive problems. However, if we have children who are born cesarean section, the moms had to take antibiotics during that birth period. The children had to take antibiotics within the first year of life or their formula fed most of their life. What will happen pala is that the bacteria inside those ba babies will shift to an unhealthy um, set of bacteria, leading to more allergies, more asthma, more autoimmune disease in the long run. So dapat pala talaga, we stick to what's natural or the least processed versions of food para we can see the right bacteria in the body. Um, <clears throat> we've seen in this other slide showing the evolution of the bacteria over time. Uh, I just want to show this slide because it gives us hope that 
If we do change the diet, we've seen that within as early as two weeks or to three weeks, the, back, the healthy bacteria will start to come back into the body as long as the food is healthy and there's a lot of fruits and veggies in the diet. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's move to the next. Oops. Mute, please. Yes, we'll go again. All right. Um, <clears throat> this, this is a slide showing the different types of bacteria and that the bacteria within our bodies actually do a number of different things. No? Number one, if you eat a poison, the bacteria will protect you against the poison. Number two, if you eat food, the bacteria will process the food and you can absorb the food that you just ate. Number three, the bacteria um, will manage uh, other types of bacteria. So let's say you eat, let's say my food gut, tas nahulug sa floor, tas kinain mo yun. Kung meron mga contaminants yun, our internal bacteria will protect us against these new bacteria found on that type of food. <clears throat> and so when we look at research, looking into the difference of bacterial diversity in kids with autism and kids without, excuse me, without autism, we see that there's more diversity of healthy bacteria in kids who are normal rather than kids who are in the, on the spectrum. So the poor diversity of bacteria leads to poor digestion of proteins. The poor digestion of proteins leads to more inflammation in the digestive tract of the kids, and that leads to more um, neurologic symptoms in the long run. We've also seen in research that <clears throat> the gut microbiome, the gut microbiota, has the ability to extract nutrients from food, and then they can send the nutrients up the vagus nerve into the brain. In fact, 90% of serotonin in the body, so one of the chemicals for the brain to function properly for happiness, is produced by the digestive system. So if we can't get the digestive system bacteria to be balanced, how can we ever get the brain to be balanced, no matter what medicine or therapy we're giving to the children? Here's our current understanding of the microbiome that um, it's irresponsible for digestion, uh, immune system regulation, turning on and off the immune system. It's responsible for uh, neurologic function, brain function, and it's responsible for clearing toxins from the body. <clears throat> um, poor, what we then can conclude in this first segment is that proper gut microbe diversity, so the good balance of bacteria, improves all the symptoms of digestion, therefore leading to better symptoms of uh, brain function in the long run. So when we go back to our case, no, see, see Espin, our five-year-old female no, autism spectrum, <clears throat> what are the evidences in her story and timeline that she has lower um, bacterial counts for healthy bacteria or an imbalance in the digestive system bacteria? Well, again, I mentioned cesarean section delivery will imbalance the bacteria. Breastfeeding, uh, non-breastfed babies or formula milk will imbalance the bacteria. <clears throat> um, as, they, it, as the bacteria get imbalanced, notice that the symptoms of inflammation started to go up, eczema, bloating, mucus, uh, poor eye contact. <clears throat> and then notice on the upper right side, when the food was more controlled, when they were giving her more um, spinach and beets, uh, the symptoms uh, of autism would get worse. She'd get more um, nightmares. But when the food was good, she'd get less bloated. So um, later I'll, I'll discuss that. But we know now that if children are responsive to oxalate-containing foods, it means that there's a fungal infection inside the body. I'll show you some of that later. Okay, so um, <clears throat> in, in summary, we know now no, that food can trigger inflammation if we eat candies, sugar, processed food, additives, coloring, they will make more inflammation in the digestive system natin, and that will then lead to inflammation of the body and or of the brain at the same time. Um, here's an example of how that works out. So there are many researches or many suggestions out there that ask people to, say, to stay away from gluten or dairy, to ask their kids to take that away. And the mechanism why that happens is because of this. Uh, in individuals who are susceptible to gluten or dairy, we've seen that um, the gluten particle goes into the digestive tract and that particle starts to um, increase a certain strain of bacteria. And in increasing the bacteria, they start to produce more toxins in the digestive tract. When the gluten particle <clears throat> um, in susceptible kids uh, starts to stick to the digestive lining, um, it sticks to this receptor called zonulin. It opens the gut channel. I don't know if you've heard of the term leaky gut, but 
um, in 13% of cases uh, in kids or adults, gluten itself can be a trigger to open the gut lining. And as the gut lining opens, all of the toxins outside the digestive system can come in and create inflammation. <clears throat> Here's another example of how this mechanism works. Uh, but before that, I want to show you this paper showing that uh, when kids on the spectrum were tested uh, to see how much zonulin was activated, meaning in the as, as a response to gluten exposure, they found out that most kids actually had increased zonulin or increased leakiness of their digestive systems. <clears throat> right, so um, what then would be a good diet to try uh, to start off any parent who has a new diagnosis for their child of developmental disability or delay? Well, we can see that a type of elimination can help out. Um, <clears throat> specifically, what the research is showing is that although there are no associations between gluten and improvements in autism, uh, <clears throat> and although there are um, no significant um, changes when you or research behind taking out milk, we're seeing that sorry, uh, <clears throat> when we test kids' bloods, uh, and we start to take away these food compounds, there's an overall lower inflammation level sa kids' bodies when we do it. That's why uh, to start off, no, we start all our kids with a certain type of elimination diet for three weeks. Um, and then after the three weeks, we start to put back the food slowly. Uh, what do we eliminate specifically? We do the big three, sugar, gluten, dairy. Um, <clears throat> we also try to eliminate processed food. Uh, we eliminate soy and corn because of the pesticide content. And locally, I started to try eliminating um, white rice from patients, from kids, because I've seen there's also a lot of pesticide content in rice. And then after the three weeks, we're going to try to put back the foods one at a time to see if pagbalik ng food, meron ba silang response? Is the behavior better or worse after they put back the food? If the behavior becomes worse or there are symptoms that happen after then we know that that food triggers inflammation in that child. <clears throat> Medyo may pagka-trial and error kasi, again, all kids are different. Um, this is an example of an elimination diet food plan uh, which, is, which was given to us by the IFM. Okay. Um, when we do a type of elimination, we have to make sure that uh, it, you're using whole foods. There's no processed food. It's mostly protein and veggies and carbs would be uh, gluten-free grains. But what it does really is it starts to repair the digestive system. It lowers the inflammation level of the body. It starts to foster healthier bacteria. And at the same time, it starts to repair and replenish nutrients that are lost uh, if they're eating a certain way. <clears throat> so uh, just remember that the digestive system of a person is what houses the immune system. If we don't eat properly, the immune system can never get stabilized. And if that can't get stabilized, we can never stabilize the brain in the same manner. Okay, good. <clears throat> These are the things that we expose our digestive system to. Uh, food, bugs, toxins, and stress. This shifts or changes the bacteria that live inside us and the microbes and the fungi that live inside us. And that will start to create leakiness or non-leakiness of our digestive lining, which can then affect the immune system, which lies underneath the, the, in, uh, the digestive tract. So what do we do for uh, what did we do for SP? Since we saw in the history niya, that there were signs that there are imbalances within um, within her story, uh, we did uh, we did sophisticated testing. So this is a functional test. It's a stool test. <clears throat> we cultured the stool um, and we sent it to the states. In the states, they cultured for three weeks, and here we can see that um, she actually had a couple of different imbalances and infections in the digestive tract. Number one, uh, on the left side, she didn't have enough healthy bacteria, the lactobacillus species. Uh, and on the far right side, she was plus four or too many to count on the infectious bacteria of Klebsiella and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So basically, uh, SP was walking, talking, uh, developmental age child, but she had multiple infections na pala inside the digestive system, causing some of those symptoms. Okay. <clears throat> um, Here's another evidence of an imbalance in the bacteria, the propionate count. And yeah. So <clears throat> now that we can we have seen no, in the story and in lab testing that SP had issues in the digestive system. Um, 
And she had it for quite quite a long time, no? since she was born until five years old. She had issues with the digestion system. Um, we can then assume that she has had issues with nutrition. So we also checked her nutritional status. And these are the lab results that we saw. Um, <clears throat> we looked at the complete blood count and we found out that her liver enzymes were actually elevated. Um, 41, yung one of the liver enzymes, which means that she's trying to detox certain things. We saw in another test called the organic acid test, the following markers were elevated, which means a deficiency in um, iron, we had a deficiency in oxygenation, we had a deficiency in B vitamins, we had a deficiency in uh, toxin clearance or, methyl or the process of methylation, and we had a deficiency in B9 and B12 at the same time. <clears throat> so this way, you know, it was very guided. We kami nag guess on what to give SP. Um, our full nutritional assessment was she had leaky gut, uh, she had hidden infections as well, and um, we had evidences of protein imbalances, fatty acid, uh, protein imbalances, poor carbohydrate digestion and, and processing. We had evidences of uh, mineral imbalances, vitamin imbalances, lack of phytonutrients, um, toxin load, and then again, dysbiosis or the imbalance in the digestive system. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, good gut function integrity always is always the backdrop of good brain function. If the gut is not well, the brain can't be well at the same time because there's a good connection. But how does that happen? So let's try to take a look. I mentioned before about the neuron when you started the lecture that the brain is made of these cells called the neurons. The neurons try to connect to one another. In doing that, they have these small batteries again called mitochondria. The mitochondria we've seen <clears throat> is like an engine of the body. So on the left side, we're saying engine and motor. On the right side, that is called the TCA or the Krebs cycle. Yan yung mismong engine ng cells natin. That's how we produce energy. Um, <clears throat> just like the motor on the left side, we know that this motor needs gasoline, lubricant, water, air, minerals. <clears throat> and same is true for the body. Our body, when we eat food, no proteins, fats, carbs, let's say you eat uh, <laughs> rice or you eat uh, sandwich, uh, <clears throat> gluten yung sandwich, pero yun si eating sandwich, may protein yun, may carbs yun, may fats. Meron pala tayong internal steps to convert it from one stage to the next. So, carbohydrates need magnesium, they need zinc, they need oxygen, B2, B1. <clears throat> and if we don't have these nutrients, the foods don't get converted into energy. And if they don't get converted into energy, the brain doesn't get any energy after they eat food. Or it gets too much energy naman if it's too much of a certain type of fuel. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we also know that if the body is um, flooded with metals like aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, fluoride, mercury, and antimony, it will steal energy naman from the body. Uh, <clears throat> and so in her, no, in SP, what did we see? <clears throat> Excuse me. We saw deficiencies in zinc and oxygen, magnesium, B1, B2, B3. We saw deficiencies. Uh, we saw um, <clears throat> an issue with mercury. And I think, yeah, these were the deficiencies in her. Magnesium, lipoic acid, lipoic, B1, B2, zinc, oxygen, iron, and glutathione. So at this point in time, we kami not guess. We knew she had the leaky gut. Uh, we had to work on that. Uh, so that's the first assessment. But because of the year's worth of leaky gut and infections, she had nutritional imbalances which were then blocking the brain from producing energy to create better function. Kaya pala, kahit na therapy ng therapy, um, it, the, the <clears throat> success rate or the, the things that she would learn would not be maintained. She'd regress after each lesson, a week or two after the lessons. <clears throat> and so the energy to be produced inside the body is called ATP. Um, why is this important? Uh, ATP, very scientific, but ATP <clears throat> is important because it's what starts the engine in energy from, um, inside the body to start to produce energy. Okay, I'll show you this. What we found out is that when the body starts to produce energy, there has to be a stimulant signal. So I'd like you to try to get your hand, no? Tapos itap nyo yung, uh, ano nyo dito? Behind the, palm, behind the thumb area. <clears throat> when you tap it, uh, yung pressure no hand, yung tapping on your uh, your finger to your hand, uh, create 
triggers the neuron or the nerve here to shoot a signal from your hand all the way to the spine into the brain. And then your brain will tell you that someone's tapping your, your hand. But if you lessen the tap, some people will not feel or hindi mag-activate yung, yung neuron natin doon. <clears throat> yung activation pala of the neuron needs a certain level or threshold for activation. And in kids, um, in normal kids, normal yun. So uh, if, for example, the energy required to activate is, in this case, it's negative 70, um, negative 70 yung, yung potential natin to start. <clears throat> if, however, um, the kid has different nutritional imbalances, um, they're not breathing properly, they don't have good blood circulation, they have some toxins in the blood or the body, or there, there's an inflammation or infection, um, what happens is the trigger points become more sensitive or less sensitive. So either way, if the child becomes more sensitive, what would then happen is that every time um, they would get triggered, so let's say may bagong light na nag-flash sa eye nila, it will grab their attention. Let's say may hangin na umihip dito, trigger na naman sila, it will grab their attention. So the behavior of ADHD, yung super kulit na kids, yung super distractible kids, it's not because they want to be distracted, but it's because their brain neurons are too hypersensitive. <clears throat> and there are reasons for I'll show you the reason later for being too hypersensitive. But yun pala, there's something internal and biological that's causing them to lose focus and attention all the time. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we've seen this uh, evidence play out uh, in certain papers that show how the ability of the brain to develop is tied directly to the digestive system. Um, in, this in this paper, it's called Neuroplasticity and Dysfunction After Gastrointestinal Inflammation. <clears throat> um, they saw in the paper, they, they shared in the paper, that if the child or the patient has digestive inflammation, it starts to create more hyper-excitable neurons in the brain, creating more behaviors of um, ADHD-like or poor focus or poor attention-like behaviors. So <clears throat> what then do we do? Well, there are factors to stabilize the brain. Uh, for the brain to produce enough energy and consistent, stable energy, we need to have good oxygenation. The brain has to have good blood sugar balance. Dapat hindi nagsiswing yung blood sugar. The brain has to have good stimulation or yung mga lessons are, are good. Parang they're doing classes and all that. And then there has to be no inflammation or infection in the body. Um, <clears throat> so to take care of oxygenation of the body, we have to make sure our kids are breathing well. They're exercising, they're running para they have good gas exchange. Hindi lang nakaupo or nakahiga sa kama the whole day. Kalan pinapawisan rin sila. We have to do a complete blood count and an iron panel to check for anemia. Some kids, most of a lot of, it's going to be 30% of the kids I see have some type of iron imbalance or anemia, or they have to be uh, belly breathers, not chest breathers. Uh, yung belly breathing can be trained through different types of therapy or uh, yoga for, for autism specialists. I'll show you how that works out later. <clears throat> Number two, uh, I think we might go over time, sorry, but <laughs> I'm, doing a, I'm, making a, I'm doing a slower lecture today so that everyone can understand. Uh, <clears throat> for blood sugar, uh, we have to make sure that the blood sugar is stable. So the food we eat has to have protein in every meal and fiber to make sure that the blood sugar is stabilized. We can't give kids just bread, crackers, uh, chicheria for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or snacks because once you just consume carbohydrates, the blood sugar will swing up. When the blood sugar swings up, they're going to be very, very hyper. And then after 40 minutes, the blood sugar will drop down. <clears throat> When the blood sugar drops down, they're going to start to crave sugar at that time. So if you have kids who are super hyper after meals, check if you're feeding them too much carbohydrates or sugar during the meals. Um, stimulation is through classes or therapies. And then um, oxidative stress or inflammation. We have to hunt for inflammation by looking for toxins or hidden infections and removing foods that they can't digest. And then nutritional status. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about... Um, Toxins in the environment. Um, what is the state of our environment? We know that most of the food is contaminated with toxins in the form of coloring, additives, and different types of uh, chemicals. 
this was an article that came out in 2021. Uh, we have plummeting sperm counts now <laughs> and shrinking penis sizes. If you're familiar with the, the lady, Erin Brockovich, she actually um, wrote an article back in 2021 saying that um, <clears throat> we might see the end of mankind soon because the chemicals we're using uh, go into the environment and then they, they go into the bodies of people and then they start to create uh, more estrogen or woman hormone-like syndromes uh, causing these shrinking uh, penis sizes and uh, sperm counts. We know that from 1950 to 2015, the plastic production has increased over a period of time. Currently, we're producing more than 350 million tons of plastic per year. Um, the plastics and toxins are produced in factories. They go to our cities. From the city to the home, to the home, to the garbage um, disposal sites. <clears throat> and then they get find their way into the water system, into our oceans. And in our oceans, we have big plastic, microplastic issues there. Um, so much so that in recent publications also, uh, we've seen microplastics in unborn babies. So even before they came into the world, the mom was exposed to microplastics. They eat something with microplastics. It goes into the digestive system. It enters the intestinal area, goes into the blood. That blood goes to the baby even before they're born. Uh, <clears throat> so more, now more than ever, it's important to understand that we have to detox. Uh, detox is an idea or a concept where despite what we're exposed to, persistent organic pollutants, metals, um, <clears throat> toxic antibacterials, phthalates, BPA, we can clear them out because the body is designed to clear them out. But how do we clear them out? Um, well, we use the liver and the kidney and our pooping to clear out things. So we have to make sure that everyone has adequate and daily pooping uh, behaviors. If not, things will get stuck in the body and we're going to start to store more toxins over a period of time. We also know that the liver is the main powerhouse of detox. <clears throat> and so uh, the liver needs a number of different nutrient um, keys. No? Specifically, we need the following, B2, B3, B6, B12, B9, glutathione and flavonoids or the, the pigments of fruits and veggies. We need proteins, methionine, cysteine, magnesium, glutathione. We need uh, B vitamins, vitamin C, antioxidants. If we don't have these, things get stuck in the body. And if the toxins get stuck in the body, they can cause problems in the long run. Specifically for our kids, when things get stuck in the body, that's an extra load for their bodies to, to handle. And so there's less body or cellular energy that goes to brain development and brain function. All right. <clears throat> Let's skip this. All right. <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm going to go over time. <laughs> I think it's already been uh, 45 minutes or four, four, 50 minutes, but maybe about five minutes na lang. Five to ten minutes now. Um, one key uh, nutritional key we found specific to autism is sulforaphane. This has undergone a number of different uh, randomized controlled trials in the U.S. Basically, it's from cauliflower, cabbage, uh, garden cress, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Locally, uh, mustasa or mustard greens has a lot of sulforaphane. <clears throat> um, in the research, we've seen that it has an impact on three specific uh, mechanisms the ability of the body to produce energy, the ability of the body to clear toxins, and the ability of the body to induce um, lower inflammation in different areas. So just a summary of what the research has shown. This is the randomized controlled trial done on kids with autism. Um, and they said that in the research, this is a Zimmerman trial, they said that uh, sulforaphane led to small yet uh, non-statistically significant changes in the total and all subscore, subscale scores for the primary outcome measure. While for secondary outcome measures, like the ability of the kids to speak, the ability of the kids to interact with parents, uh, and the, the ability to focus and have attention, um, it showed st statistically significant improvement. So clinically, I've been using sulforaphane for two and a half years now. Uh, the research shows that a third of kids start to get a type of improvement I've been seeing that the same outcome clinically. So uh, in all the kids, we try a two, like a six to eight week trial. If in six to eight weeks, the kids don't improve, then they're a non-responder. We don't even, we don't try it anymore. But 
uh, in a third of the kids, we start to get better behavior and better speech. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of nutrients for the brain, there are many articles that show the different types of nutrients. But I'll show you my, my list, the ones that I really take a look at all the time. Um, and again, nutrition is very personalized. Uh, we can't go over, we can't go under. They have to be at the right level. Uh, specifically, we have to make sure they have adequate protein in the diet, adequate healthy fats, uh, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins, phytochemicals, the, the pigments, uh, other nutrients. And we have to have things that will support the growth of healthy bacteria or uh, pre and probiotics. <clears throat> so I am about done. Na pala. <laughs> uh, I'll be on time. So what then is the goal uh, coming into every child with developmental disability? Uh, <clears throat> it's not to ask them to develop. It's to understand that they're not developing because there are underlying causes to why the brain is not expanding. And so in this case, we're trying to understand, is there a food trigger? Is there an infection that's not treated? Are there toxins getting stuck or continuously getting exposed to? Is there a stressor or is there trauma? And um, what's the nutritional status like? So what did we do for her? We put her on that standard 21-day elimination diet and reintroduction. We work to remove the infections. Uh, we work to improve digestive function. Then we repaired the digestive tract to make sure it's sealed and not leaky. We started to put healthy bacteria, <clears throat> and then we rebalanced her nutritional imbalances. Then we started to do the brain training or therapies um, uh, <clears throat> aggressively. Then we track the progress every time. So if we do the elimination diet, that starts to improve immune function, right? So immune system has an impact on the brain. Uh, and it improves microbiome diversity. When we work through the digestive system, we're trying to clear out toxins. When we improve um, GI absorption, it's for nutritional status, which then supports the brain through supporting nutritional needs of the mitochondria. And then we induce the neuroplasticity. Again, we, when we just induce neuroplasticity or we just ask kids to develop, but there's no nutritional back end or there's no work on inflammation, the gains will be slow and the gains for some kids will not be sustained or what we've seen are not sustained. <clears throat> so here are the specific things we did for her. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> every child is different, but we use similarly, almost the same stuff for most kids. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I think I'll, I'll move on. So what did we see? <clears throat> All right, so remember the symptoms questionnaire. Um, that I had shown you at the start of the lecture. In April of 2020, <clears throat> her symptoms questionnaire was a big 66, multiple different symptoms across the body. <clears throat> As we worked through month on month, you'll notice that the symptoms started to drop um, across time. And within one year from 66, the symptom score was down to 15. Uh, this is the timing of how we did the interventions within the first two months. We improved immune function, increased the diversity of the microbes. <clears throat> Within the next two months, we improved GI absorption. Next two months, we started to clear toxins, infections, and worked on food triggers. Within the last four months, we've supported the, the brain function through mitochondrial supplementation, and then we induced neuroplasticity or do the therapies uh, across <clears throat> the entire span of the one year. So here are the spe specific things we did, so elimination diet, we repaired the gut with glutamine, zinc, vitamin D, A, fish oil. We used nystatin, herbal antifungal antibacterials. We used sulforaphane on the fourth month or fifth month. Uh, detox products like NAC, vitamin C, methylation, nutrients, B95. Okay. <clears throat> Here's our autism treatment evaluation checklist, ATEC. You recall ATEC is the, the one we use all the time because it's a very good measure of if things are um, working or they're not working. Uh, our ATEC started at 51, <clears throat> and um, we ended April of last year at 22, right? So with the marked improvement in language from 10 to 6, sociability really improved from 11 to 4, sensory 15 to 6, physical health from 15 to 6, right? So here's the overlaying of the program we did for her, and those are the specific things we, we induced. So notice that we don't do everything at the same time. Um, the body doesn't work in that fashion. You have to do it. There's a stepwise way of working through cases. And <clears throat> if you do the right things in the right order, uh, things progress quite nicely. Here are some studies showing 
uh, a rapid and complete recovery from autism uh, of a child who was thought to be fully autistic, but when the functional medicine doctor, Dr. Cindy Baker, worked on the child, they found that they had a mold infection, a spurgillus mold infection in the body. <clears throat> um, the, the paper shows uh, goes on saying, escalation of dose of itraconazole resulted in a complete loss of all symptoms of autism over the course of three months. This rapid, complete reversal of autism is consistent with several articles proposing mold in general and aspergillus as a potential major cause of autism. Again, most kids might have it, but we don't guess because we're using medicines to treat. So we do testing to find out, then we treat if we do find out that there are infections. Here's the randomized control trial for um, sulforaphane. This is a randomized control trial also for um, a multimodal intervention similar to what I do, what we do for our kids. <clears throat> and this one, they used vitamin, vitamin and mineral supplementation, uh, essential fatty acids or fish oils, Epsom salt baths, carnitine, digestive enzymes, and a gluten-free, casein-free, soy-free diet. <clears throat> uh, they found out in this paper, I'm not going to show you this one, go to the next, that across nine autism score, case, score scales, every treatment group improved as opposed to a non-treatment group. Uh, so this is, again, uh, a randomized controlled trial proving that. This is something we've been executing in clinic for the past uh, year and a half now, I think, or two years. We've seen good success for kids. Uh, we've started to use uh, yoga as a form of improving the breathing of children and circulation of blood and oxygen in the system, as well as to induce um, good neuroplasticity. Uh, here's a I know, <clears throat> video. I don't know if you can hear the... the uh, we asked teacher Nick to blur the, the video. This is with, uh, given with consent of the parents as well. So you'll notice that uh, when we do those types of therapies, we're inducing uh, good expansion of belly breathing to stimulate the vagus nerve, creating a much uh, a good connection between the digestive system and the brain to stimulate better neuroplasticity. Right. So in summary, <laughs> sorry the lecture took longer than expected. Um, we eat food every day, <clears throat> and the food we eat gets broken down into nutrients inside our digestive system. We have trillions of microbes that process that, and then that then sends signals to our immune system if it's going to react to it or not. <clears throat> and then we clear out the food that we consume. <clears throat> um, if we're able to get the digestive system super healthy, we can then induce the following things, better energy for the brain and health. We can regulate the immune system much better, be a better front line of defense against invaders, infections, or pathogens, or toxins. We can um, get a healthier microbiome and we can clear out toxins in a more efficient manner. Uh, this again is the ATEC score. I, we see this consistently now across the board for uh, most of the kids that we work with. We don't get full reversal in all, um, but we do get it uh, on, the, there, there, are just, there is a percentage that we do get it. <clears throat> but again, it's only as good as how well they, they maintain the healthy food and the certain things. So, uh, we do a check-in every year for those who have who have recovered, and we just try to track what things are starting to get imbalanced if some symptoms are starting to uh, come up again over a period of time. <clears throat> All right, this is symptoms questionnaire, and uh, SB is not back actually normal school. Um, she's still on a whole food diet, and we have some supplements for her. We do once a year uh, lab testing, and then. Um, <clears throat> From the latest follow-up, she, she has more spontaneous conversation now, but she's still having a hard time to sit in class um, on topics she doesn't like. 
uh, we don't know if it's because she's growing up already, but so far, she's, she's already able to go back to normal school. So uh, we're quite happy with that. <clears throat> okay. And yeah, I think those are discussion points. We were able to go through how we work with kids from a functional medicine model um, <clears throat> and how to initiate a multimodal intervention. You guys have the tools now. You understand how food is really important in treating this condition and how there are many different ways we can approach the condition. Uh, there's no one plan for, for kids. It's always personalized. Uh, but there are commonalities across the board. <clears throat> and yeah, I think we can start to take questions now. In. Huh. Okay, thank you for Dr. Raymond. So informative. So, it's so informative. Yeah. So guys, um, do you have any questions um, after the discussion? Yes. Hello. So one at a time, Paul. So see Anne. And do I just answer or will we read them out? Or I think si Ma'am Queenie na wala. I think, you know, um, uh, 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 I think we should read them out para lang sila, for them to mm -mm. So maybe wolves. Okay. Uh, Hello. Si, si Miss Anne actually asked, uh, Hi, Miss Anne. Good <laughs> afternoon po. <laughs> How about the name and check protocol? Do you recommend it? Uh, I've worked with kids who are on the protocol. Um, again, I have the luxury of testing my kids. <laughs> so because we can test the fatty acids levels, um, we can know exactly what they need. Uh, some kids need it, some kids don't. Uh, yeah. With regard to the segment on prebiotics inulin and the segment on probiotics, uh, some kids who have a lot of digestive imbalances can't be given inulin yet. They're going to create a lot of gas and bloating. So we uh, clear out infectious bacteria, then we give the inulin. So again, there, there's, there's different timings. Um, yeah. <clears throat> not that the, th the therapy is good, the things inside the therapy are good, uh, but we can be more precise about mm -hmm. when to use them and how to use them and how much we use them. But it's not guesswork. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's less guesswork. There's still some guesswork, but... Uh, we're trying to take away all the the ano kasi, un, the most of the um, unsureness of the of what we do for the kids. And then um, there's a question po here from Ma'am Marlene. Uh, what are interventions in kids with high liver enzymes? Um, so thanks, Miss Marlene. That's a really good question. Uh, just know that the liver enzymes, how we read them, no, how we have to understand them. Para po siyang dial. Diba pag nag-turn on kayo ng stove, <laughs> tinataas niyo siya. So that's how the liver enzymes work. It's like a dial. The higher the number, the more you're turning the dial to turn on. Um, it's, a, it's an indicator for us that the liver is trying to clear toxins. <clears throat> or the liver is trying to, to process things in the body. So if it's high, we go back to yung diagram natin kanina. Uh, we give the nutrients for phase 1 and phase 2. The B vitamins, protein, uh, but also, we have to make sure every day nag poop yung patient or every day pa ding pawisan. Kasi if the liver is working so hard, it means maraming nasa stuck sa body. So if we don't sweat, toxins won't come out in the sweat. If we don't poop, the toxins won't come out sa poop. Yung liver will always keep trying to process yung nasa stuck na toxins. I hope that helps, Miss Marlene. <clears throat> um, I think there was a... My private message question. Do, do I read that? Yeah. <laughs> Sige, I'll read this one. Po. And then, feel free to read, Ma'am Doc Nikki, if you have some. I'll do this one now. Uh, <clears throat> Ma'am Serlene Kizana is asking, um, yung first ko po kasi, she was diagnosed autoimmune, primary sclerosing cholangitis, uh, ulcerative colitis, IBD. Connected po ba siya sa ASD? Yung second ko po, may ASD naman. So, uh, <clears throat> Ma'am Serlene, uh, in the research po, there are interconnections. Uh, specifically po, um, autoimmune disease, I said, diba, has its roots in imbalanced healthy bacteria. Uh, so, 
in in autism naman meron rin tayong roots na uh, any time of type of poor brain development has its roots in imbalanced healthy bacteria so <clears throat> baka po for your family uh, the number one way is to change diet kasi the food you eat will improve the healthy bacteria in the body then that will improve lahat ng mga symptoms nila from ASD all the way to yung autoimmune ng ibang iba yung mga kids. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, Doc Nikki, feel free po to, to read. Yes, out. there's another question, Doc, from Drea Lima. This is about the OAT test and the CSAP test, uh, the okay. GAT test. So, Ma'am Drea is asking, uh, what's the importance of organic acid test or OAT test? And CSAP is comprehensive uh, stool and parasitology. There's a new name for that now. It's called GI360 from that company. <clears throat> um, oat po, uh, organic acid, is something we use on all kids. Uh, ano po siya? Test siya that will check all the chemical markers for infection, toxins, and nutritional status. So if you give it to someone like me who's been reading oat tests for eight years, <laughs> para po pong nakita na yung loob ng katawan ng baby niyo. <laughs> kasi uh, may, alam ko na on how the markers play out kasi. Uh, the stool test is for us to see what's living sa loob ng bituka, sa digestive system. So, um, I've learned to practice with or without both. <laughs> but, uh, of course, the, the more info we have, the better, the, the more targeted we can move with, with the recommendations. Um, <clears throat> si Sean is asking, uh, Hi, uh, spinach and beets were mentioned a while ago. Are these not recommended to be given to kids with ASD? Um, so the simple answer to that, Sean, is no. <laughs> Actually, spinach and beets are super healthy. However, they have high oxalates, diba? So there's a class of foods with oxalate content. Uh, it turns out in some kids with on the spectrum who have a fungal infection, they can't eat oxalate-rich foods because the fungus eats the oxalate and it loads that oxalate toxin into the body. So... Um, Either you do a trial of low oxalate diet, see if the behavior is improved, or we can do a test, yung organic acid, to see if there's fungal infections. Then we treat the fungal infection, then okay na yun. Most kids naman, if they don't have a fungal infection, they'll be able to tolerate the, the spinach beets or high oxalate foods. Okay. Um, hey, Doc, my question po dito. Si um, Ann um, and... How about fulvic acid and zeolite? Do you recommend uh, din po ba yun? Okay. So, um, <clears throat> hi, Ma'am Ann. Good afternoon po. Uh, fulvic acid and zeolite, these are binders, no? They start to bind out toxins from the gut. Um, it will work if <clears throat> we are trying to clear out infection and we're trying to clear out toxins, but only if the liver is processing correctly. <clears throat> so, Let's say constipated yung child, we don't even try to use fulvic acid or zeolite kasi hindi nga gumagalaw yung digestive system. <clears throat> so normally what we do is we kill infection. So we do some type of treatment to clear out infection. Make sure that they nagpupoop sila every day by changing the diet. And then every three days we'll give the zeolite or every or we'll give the fulvic acid para lang to, to be a binder. Um, I've used something cheaper. <laughs> Locally, I use psyllium fiber. <laughs> we found out that it's more available, it's cheaper. Or uh, from a food uh, standpoint, sometimes we ask families to make smoothies, mga healthy na fruit, veggie, more veggie than fruit na smoothie. Marami ng fiber yon, it can bind out the, the toxins sa bituka ng baby. Okay. Um, uh. Okay, Doc, um, do you still have time? Or, yeah, yeah, time? yeah. Kaya nag-4.30. Thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, kasi no, parang, po, this is... eh. parang interested yung mga ano, mag, um, nakinig niyo yung hapon. So parang na, na, ano, sila na-enlighten sa discussion niyo po. So parang oh, po. ang daming tanong. <laughs> this is my ano po, passion ko to talaga. I love, thank you so I much. love kids. <laughs> not, not, I, not na I love the kids that they're on this program, but I love talaga working with kids ano kasi nga it's a very personal ano for me eh. the very personal issue kasi nga with the Yung family thing we have advocacy niyo po parang parang ganun. naging ganun oh, na po eh. after the work on bringing functional medicine sa Southeast Asia, I stopped that na ito na yung parang naging ano ko <laughs> naging passion ko lately <laughs> oh, po 
Okay, oh, so question. we can proceed with the next question. Doc, magpano po, mag, magkano po daw magpakonsult at magkano yung mga laboratory <laughs> tests? Oh, oh, no. Magkaroon ng idea yung mga members. <laughs> Sige po. Actually, siguro I can share with you the cost to care, no? Kasi, syempre, we've been doing this for many years na, eh. Um, yes, so, uh, What we see, just ballpark, I won't say na my fees kasi, uh, oh, yeah. ano na lang, personal pa ka nandi as. But, okay po. Siguro po, if a child undergoes functional medicine care, whether under me or other functional medicine doctors, at the very most, you'll spend about 100,000 to 150,000 in a whole year for the first year. <clears throat> um, that entire spending will, will take care of all the consults, all your lab testing, all your supplements, all the food changes. And then, because on the first year, we assume ma-fix na marami sa mga problems, the cost dramatically drops the next year. <clears throat> kasi po, and si Sir Joey, alam yan. <laughs> Ayun, baka, Sir Joey, baka you can share po, kasi kayo po, you went through na the, the cost aspect rin of that. Eh. Yes, actually, yung sinabi ni Doc Raymond, na ganun nga, no? ang pinakamalaki lang naman dyan are the lab tests, which are, which is, for us, is so very, very important. Kasi yun ang sinasabi nga ni Doc, eh. yung kahit anong gawin mo with the therapy, kahit anong gawin mo with the food, pag hindi alam talaga yung cost ng problem, yung nga, yung, uh, yung mga lab test, like the infections, the mold, all of these things, no? pag hindi nila makuha, pag hindi na gumaling yun, kahit anong food gawin mo, pasok, ay, it, will, it will work. Hindi ko sinasabi hindi. Pero, pag naayos yung mga bacterial problem, eh, hindi, anak ko, <laughs> Yet, ay nang alaki. Diba, Doc, naalala nyo? Pag merong may bacterial tayong tinest sa kanya, ang parang halimbawa lang, assuming na yung tamang ano niya is mga 200 to 300 lang dapat yun. Kaya dyan, yes, 5,000. What? Naalala ko kami doon. Diba? Oh, ano Clostridium. Naalala ko pa po yung test nyo eh. Clostridium yung ano sa kanya. Diba? <laughs> Tapos when we fix that, mga 2 weeks lang yata doon tayo, diba, Doc? We fix that eh. Tapos we went to, yun na, nagpunta na kami into... Uh, what's that? Yung, uh, yung uh, elimination diet na. May, may tama yung sinasabi nito. Kanina may progression eh. When we do the progression, rightfully, of course, merong standard. Maraming sabi ng doc, iba-iba with the kids. No? Pero if we do it with the uh, tamang pro, uh, proper way, mas effective, mas mabilis eh. Mm. Tapos, si, si, si yung ano nga, si S, diba? Yung kid, diba? One, one year ba lang ba siya? One year na six ba siya yung sample ni doc? One year Amen. po yun, one year. One year pa lang. <laughs> si Jet, four years na eh, after. Ngayon, almost recovered na si Jet. I'm not saying na, no, but sabi ngayon, Doc, different persons, different, ano, data. So, yun lang. And the cost, like what I said, yes, tama si Doc, mangga, no, malaki lang talagang yung lab. Pero, yun lang yung medyo malaki doon. Yeah. Yes, Tsaka yung doc, supplement po, <clears throat> Sir Joey, yung supplement rin, medyo, siguro mga... 10,000 siguro every two months, 15,000 every two months yung the supplement. The consultation, ito lang, the consultation, the supplement, hindi ganun kalaki, malaki lang ito yung lab. Pero yung lab, yung lab. Man, ano lang, medyo one time bit. One go yan. lang, opo, one go lang. <laughs> one afterwards, wala na. Sa so, tubi, ano si Ju, guys, sundan na yung process, pero afterwards, wala na. Yung second year na, parang, wala, konti na lang eh. Yeah, wala nang cost. Eh, wala, second. wala, almost, wala na second, third year, wala na yung fourth, wala na. Hindi na masyado kami nag, ano, kasi, Grabing improvement, I'm, I'm telling you. Pero huwag kayong matakot ko. Kasi, <laughs> anak niya yun eh. And, yes. <laughs> diba, anak natin sila. Yun ang importante for them, di ba? And, mm-hmm. uh, like, alam ko rin, Sneaky, di ba? Your, your anak mo, Dr. Sneaky, is so much kilaki ng improvement. Oh. Pero ako, mm-hmm. guys, uh, Mm-hmm. Thank you, Doc, again uh, for your time. We appreciate you. Ayaw po. We appreciate you. <laughs> Ayaw four. Ayaw four o'clock. Para yeah, yeah. Thank o'clock. you, thank you. Thank you for for, for those na no, ever got. Pero yun, again, balik ako doon sa costing. Huwag kayong matakot. Huwag kayong magbigla. Grabe. Mm-hmm. Uh, second year, wala na. Parang, kumbaga, ito yung first year, second year, gano'n na. Opo. <laughs> wala na masyado. And it's the same po that we see kahit sa other case. Parang autoimmune, we were use functional medicine for them. Kasi parang after the first year po, they learn na how to how to move and natuturuan na yung families how to manage it pag may issue. Sige po ako na ulit. To be honest, di ba, four years? Kasi siya two years old eh. Tapos after four years, oh, six years old na siya. Four years kami nag-intervention yung therapy. Mas mahal pa yung <laughs> interventions namin. Tapos pagdating kay Doc, ano, six years old na si Jet, no? parang one year, two years lang kami doon. 
Tapos wala na. The rest of time, 10 years na si Jeff eh. 10 years old na si Jeff eh. And mm-hmm. you know what? Jeff is 94, 95, average sa normal school. <laughs> Matali na nga si Jen. Sabi, <laughs> ganun na siya ngayon. And uh, lahat, anyway. And uh, basta, God will bless all of us. <laughs> Definitely. God has been so good. God Thank you po, so Sir Joey. Good. At least, ano, <laughs> yung cost nga ganun. Mga 150 parang mm-hmm. ngayon. Hindi eh, ko nga lang kung nagmahal ng lalo kasi may ano eh, uh, COVID and all that. But I don't know. Depends mm-hmm. sa mga, I don't handle kasi doon mga lab lah, naman kaming business sa ganun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tama po. Mm-hmm. Parang yeah. natin sa so, uh, uh, international eh. Yeah. Uh-uh. And then for the next question na tayo para ma-maximize natin yung time ni Doc. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sige po. So sa so next po, galing po kay ano, uh, Yan Garcia Dasig. So isang moderator po namin from Clever Got. So kasi yung ano niya, yung question niya so valid. Pati ako parang I have to ask this question. <laughs> kasi tayo namang mga Pinoy, eh, we're big on rice, di ba? So <laughs> any healthier alternative to white oh rice? Oh my gosh. Sa amin po, um, and in the meantime, we're using basmati rice. So I'm not sure if okay. that can be, or is that the same? Kasi mulo GI yung basmati. But how about those ones? Was you using like your jasmine rice, white rice, mm-hmm. mother? What alternative for natin do? So, uh, <clears throat> just to clarify, no, rice itself is not bad. Ni naman siya issue. Pero the way we produce it now really has a lot of pesticide. That's the problem. Uh, <clears throat> so, if you notice, kayo po, try nyo. Okay, mag rice for three days. Yung bloating nyo mawawala. Yung <laughs> chanyo mm-hmm. nilirin. Try ko nga yan. It's really the... It causes a lot. Yung lalaking siya natin kasi matoxin siya. Whenever we get toxin load, it gets stored sa front ng belly natin or sa mga fatty tissue kasi yun. Uh, <clears throat> so we've used quinoa. Uh, less, ano yun, less issues yun. We've used adlai. Uh, careful lang sa adlai kasi mas packed siya per butil. <laughs> so parang yung half cup ng adlai is equal to one cup of rice. So <laughs> ang adlai kayo pero one cup of adlai. Para kayo nag- ano sim half. lang po ba siya ng, ano, ng black rice? Halos or different? Si, parang different po siya. Parang... Parang couscous na mas malalaki. Oo, oh, couscous. Oh. Ah, couscous, okay. So, yung and mga then, basmati rice po, Doc? So basmati, I think, has parang, less pesticide. Yeah, I think, parang, I think. I'm, I'm not sure, but... Um, kasi I I do eat a lot of Indian food. I like spicy food kasi. So, yes. uh, pag nagbabasmati, <laughs> parang I don't get bloated naman as much as if mm-hmm. I just do white rice. So, um, the best way pa rin is less processed, the better. Uh, <clears throat> and if you can do nut rice try out different. Some kids, we try to do uh, American style, quote-unquote, sweet potato, uh, kamote yeah. kahoy, gabi, uh, and then mm-hmm. yung carb nila. And then, they get healthier in the in the long run. Okay, good to know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's another question here. Neurofeedback therapy for uh, kids with autism. Oh my gosh, gustong-gusto ko yan. <laughs> Actually, uh, mm-hmm. next year, I will fly mm-hmm. to the States to do my own neurofeedback training uh, for brain mapping and induction. But again, Uh, as with what my teachers have taught me, if you just do neurofeedback without nutrition therapy, correcting internal inflammation and uh, balance, mitochondrial function, it won't hold. Because neurofeedback is a form of stimulation of the brain. Remember, when the brain gets stimulated, you need nutrients parent to create that electrical signal. All right. Then the next one is from um, Ashira. Here you go. Yeah, so hello po doc. Yung anak daw po niya na diagnosed ng Cornelia Delange syndrome. There is a possibility na may autism. Nandito na sa Dubai pa siya at mahal magpa-assess. So oh, what's the question here? Miss Ashira, I will unmute you. Is she here? Nasaan si Miss Ashira? Ashera, I think she left. We'll, yeah, we'll probably wait. We'll come back for Miss Ashera when she comes back. There's one more question for though. Yeah. What's your take on folinic acid and B12? I've read an article that the combo of these two show the most improvement as per parents' observation. So what's your thought on this? Okay, <clears throat> so folinic acid and B12 or folic acid and B12 are <clears throat> two interventions that have been known to be used Uh, by a lot of practitioners, they do injection, they do high, very yeah. high dose. <clears throat> we have the luxury of testing. <laughs> so yeah. we will see if they need. 
Um, but uh, in other in the clinics that I had gone through before, um, if hindi ka it test, they they do a trial of a high dose. <clears throat> um, I think the the folinic acid is called glucoverin. Yun yun. Walang glucoverin sa Philippines. I've been trying to find, pero na <laughs> mahanap. And then the B12 is just methyl B12. So they just do a high dose. There's a calculation per kilo. I personally, I don't do that because again, when we do the organic acid, I know the level. Eh. I know how much I need to give. But uh, it it's worth a try. There are some kids that really respond well to high B9 or high B12 doses. All right, and then yeah, the next one uh, from one of our moderators as well. What age is uh, until what age is functional medicine care recommended? And at the same time, another question, which is uh, then the same from Dr. Christine. Is it best to test kids at a younger age? My son is already 14. Can he still improve if we start this now? So the same with okay. Ms. Do, um, Ate yeah. Donna. Okay. Donna's well, yeah. Uh, thanks, Ate Donna. Thanks, Dr. Christine, for the questions. Um, <clears throat> I've worked with as early as two years old. Uh, actually, I have a two-year-old one that's uh, quite delayed because he had a lot of operations early on. <clears throat> but uh, the best time to start is when they can eat solid foods na. Kasi a lot of the therapies need to be need some supplements to be taken, liquid drops or whatnot. So kapag bottle fed pa sila, it's very hard to do any type of therapy. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, yung sa age sa as they go older, okay. <clears throat> when brains get older, they become more rigid, diba? Parang mas set sila sa ways nila. It doesn't mean it can't be changed. Neuroplasticity happens at any age naman. It's just um, trickier. But at the very back end of everything, if 14 na po yung child nyo, Dr. Steen, uh, meron na siyang mga uh, metabolic imbalance na rin inside if nag-sustain yung developmental issue. So the skin might not be healthy na, might have gained weight na, they might have issues with bowel movement, digestive. Yun malilinis lahat yun. And so at the very least, we can assure na the, li- the lifespan will improve if we can't chase after the developmental uh, issues. Thank you, Doc. There's uh, another one um, from Trey Lima, one of our moderators as well. Uh, what is the best methylation supplements for mitochondria? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I use, can we say brands? I get my I order from the yeah. States. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've used, personally, I need methylation supplements because I <laughs> So I use uh, the methyl care for metagenics. Um, we've used Thorn uh, for iHerb has that. Uh, we've used Claire Labs. They have methyl balance. Uh, meron rin sa... Ano yung isa pang site na yun? There's one site... Um, naku, hindi ko, ma- hindi ko maalala. Uh, New Beginnings. They have a, a mitochondrial support product there. Uh, most of them are in the States. Uh, we're trying to pull in some of these things because yeah. as a practitioner, it's so hard to get it and yes. we want to make things easier for parents. Yeah. Uh, our parents yes. are doing uh, door-to-door boxes or what. Yes. <laughs> so, 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 help so, ng field. Oo. Oo. So, Doc, eh, may, may mga ano po ba kayo? Stocks or hindi, wala pa po in the process pa po ba? Or just in case po if may mga mm-hmm. tanong po in the future, pwede namin ma-refer po sa inyo. So the ones that we do have sa team namin are sulforaphane. Again, I mentioned I've been using it for two and a half years na kasi. And that's one, that one's okay. We have good supply of that. Uh, mm-hmm. We've been using um, yung pang-treat ng infection, uh, the Bicidin product. That one just came in. Um, and then the next couple of months, we're trying to get some of those mga methyl stuff or the mga multivits for kids. Uh, <clears throat> the local suppliers, uh, Metagenic, Spear Encapsulations, they have good probiotic lines that, that we've used successfully. Um, they have good mga powders, mga glutamine and all that. Uh, they have good fish oils also. Pero the fish oil talaga, there's only one I like. I mean, there are two brands, the Metagenics or the... Um, <clears throat> the what's that name nordic naturals is a good uh, fish oil but again yes. no, we we tested it but we don't guess anymore yeah. so of course. yes that's right since we test we know exactly what they need then we parang we send the list oh ito pwede galing i herb ito galing sa states if you have relatives there ito may local tie nito ito dito it parang we have options para based rin dun sa budget ng family pa kaya natin paglaruan and we can get the best care for what they can um, afford at that period of time. Again, guys, food, 
is basic. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, mamaya na yung mga sophisticated supplements, uh, yung food yung pinaka-basic talaga. Yes. If food is not Oo. fixed, no yes. amount of supplements will get the children across. Mm-mm. And I find po, po Doc, um, in the last you know few years of researching and then learning about um, gut and the brain health, yun lang pong isang na ano ko, if, um, you, if your child has a healthy gut, doon lang po ma-absorb yung nutrients na nakakain nila for, sa everyday. Tama po ba? 100%. Yes. 100%. Simplest, yeah, simplest explanation. Oh po. Um, more question? Siguro we can do last two. Last two questions. Yes, okay. yes. <clears throat> Yun, Dok, My, kung mayroon daw available na lab test sa Philippines to do the gut test. Meron po. Uh, <clears throat> sila ano yan eh, sila Paolo. I have the the reps. <laughs> I can <Okay>. send. <clears throat> Siguro okay. po, um, <clears throat> baka I can talk to them, Ren, if you guys are going to do a big group na magpapalab, baka they can give a good discount. Diba? Oh, yes, yes, Dok. <laughs> Especially our, from our members. Diba bulk? Yeah. Pag may bulk uh-huh. discounting, mas ano. Eh, mm-hmm. I can talk to Paolo yeah. tomorrow. I'll try to give him a call tomorrow. Then I'll mm-hmm. connect na lang po to Dok Nikki. Kayo na lang po. Para yes. Awesome. Thank you po. Ito, may another question, Dok, uh, from um, Ms. Jeng. Yung functional, is the functional medicine done only once to a kid or there is um, repeat if it in case like after a year? less improvement is shown or and then where is your clinic in the philippines um we track so if we work together as partners if you'll allow me to help you through and through we'll work through and through until okay time okay. so continuing relationship uh more often than not after the first year things become better hopefully and because of that there's less need to see me talaga or less need to see our team uh dun po sa work po um I used to be with Life Science. I was the director there for two and a half years. I, nung nag-pandemic, I, I left na. So I've been in solo practice uh, online. But we will have a clinic na po. I live in the South kasi, in Alabang. So uh, we will build a clinic in Alabang. Oh, yeah. Siguro po mag-open in by mga October of this year or November. Mga namin yan, do. Yeah. <laughs> Tapos yun, masaya din. Abang ka eh. Gagawin namin parang ano yan eh, family place na pwede tayo mag, mag ano doon, sama-sama mga lecture and all that stuff. So, oh yes, Doc. Uh, we can organize that in the future pag umuwi yeah. din kami ni Queenie. Yeah. <laughs> Opo. Hindi ko Super fun. Sa- <laughs> and Sige then, um, so um, if people want to find me, I am all over the internet. <laughs> you search yes, my name. Yes, yes, yes. Or they can Opo. message sa Facebook. But um, just to temper the expectation, uh, I am super full. <laughs> <laughs> Parang three weeks book out na po ako As of now, yeah. no? uh, just because nga the work that I do is not common to, mm-hmm. to a lot. Um, there are practitioners that I have trained, sila Doc Rona and all that. So uh, if you're willing to go with them, okay naman yun. And I can help, I help Rona a lot naman with her cases rin if you don't want to wait. But uh, if you will wait, uh, if you email me, I'll, I'll slot you in and we'll, we'll find okay. time. To, to get oh, to and then yeah. they, they can also message you via your Facebook page yeah. for consultation uh, or how? So normally po, when they message sa Facebook, um, I'll be sending my email and then... Oh, email. Okay. When they send email, email, that's where I'll send the mga details. And, and, and. So far po kasi dahil nag-pandemic, ako, rin, ako lang mag-isa. <laughs> wala ako assistant, wala ako nurse, wala. So medyo solo flight. So medyo okay. nababag down rin sa admin. Oh, so. Sige po. Baka mabisi po kayo in the last few days. Oh. <laughs> Yung group po kasi namin, eh, um, we're almost 8,000 sa ano, mga members na po. So um, after this grabe. discussion na sobrang informative at sobrang grateful po kami na you've given us the opportunity, eh, at ang dami, ang dami pong nag-join. So um, siguro yung iba hindi nahanap yung link. Okay, Pero sige lang, hopefully in the, in the future okay, we can do this again. Okay. <clears throat> Pero yung ano po, um, just, in, just in case po, may tatanong, we can refer it to you somehow. So, baka mabisi-bisi po kayo. But, we yeah. and Nikki are happy to help kung, kung ano po, kung ano mang, ano, yung mga gusto nyo pong itatulong sa amin, we're almost, uh, we're always here. Thank you. Also po, we can do other sessions. Um, yes. <clears throat> siguro the, 
parang I found po yung nice would be yung mga Q&A session. Kahit Q&A sessions lang. Kahit yes. wala na lecture, we sit in for an hour, it's Q&A tayo doon, may mga tanong. Yes. <clears throat> I think that can help uh, a lot of families. Kasi, yes. syempre, a lot of families, when they get the diagnosis na bago, parang, ha, ay, what am I gonna do? Daming, yeah. pero mm. naman, daming, ano eh, daming <laughs> questions. So, most likely we can get even some of my colleagues to go in because we can answer help yes, answer questions. Yes, we can collaborate. Oh, yes. Oh. And then, yeah, from Dr. Christine, she wants to train. Uh, I give. <laughs> yeah. Doc, I, We're willing to can be, I be trained by you? <laughs> <laughs> eh, doc, my question po ako. Yung training po is only for doctors or only also for other mga healthcare professionals or ano po? Well, if in case, like uh, yung may gustong ano, yung willing. Opo. So, functional medicine specifically is a subspecialty for chronic disease management. Uh, it's a root cause approach to managing chronic illness. Sa US yung training na may online sila. Um, <clears throat> it it took, takes about two years to finish the entire thing because with certification. Yeah. Um, any certified practitioner um, can practice it. Nurse, nutritionist, uh, PT, uh, doctor. Basta what you practice are within your scope of license. Parang kung PT ako, I can apply function medicine pero dun sa allowed, allowable na license yeah. ko. Um, <clears throat> for physicians, um, we did do the trainings before in life science. Uh, and we did a lot of mentorship training for other doctors. Pero, kasi I left them na po, um, I don't have any mentees now. Uh, Nag-graduate yung mga mentee ko. Eh. May dalawa ako na mentee na tinuruan noon. Uh, but, uh, yes, Dr. Christine, if you're game. <laughs> Let's, uh, uh, no problem. You can, we can start working together. Mayroon kami ibang mga itatayin, I think, in the next couple of months. But in the nutri-engineering company we do, <clears throat> We are registering uh, nutrition training programs for professionals. Kasi po, di ba parang walang murang mag-nutrition sa... Parang hindi advanced nutrition ng Philippines. So we're trying... We're getting that into the PRC. Hopefully by July, okay na siya. Tapos if you're interested, we'll post it na lang. Uh, I'll po, I post it naman all the time sa wall ko if there are trainings or whatnot. Pwede naman sumali. Then we'll teach you how to read labs, how to yeah. uh, maneuver yeah. food. Oh, yes, um, yes, Doc. Yeah. Interesting yan. Yung, lalo na yung group lab na ano natin yeah. for in collaboration with Clever God. Oh, yeah, okay. we can really push this through. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very interested to join yung mga training nyo po. So, registered nurse po ako dito. I po. will. Nice. Uh. So, I am so interested with this kasi yung anak ko po, um, I've got a lot and you were saying about that five-year-old na bata kanina, parang na, nasalamin niya kasi yung anak ko eh. Oh, so, no. Parang kitang-kita <laughs> ko. So, we're, we've been doing um, Minichick protocol for like four years and a half. Okay. So, gladly, without doing anything. So, like, I'm not saying na ganito, ganito lahat sa mga bata, no? pero gladly um from from where he was at saka yung atx score niya na nara sa around 60 gone down to 6 and i think it's below na 6 below so oh, wow. congrats po <laughs> na ano talaga na na, na recover in a way <clears throat> from um someone from, from a kid na nonverbal when he was um, we started name check when he was like uh, 6 years old and mm. kakaten niya po kahapon. <laughs> so sobrang ano na fix fix na yung ano niya. Um speech kasi may severe speech and language um disorders sa noon. Mm. So yun po. So I'm I'm so interested with this. Um yeah. if, if we can collaborate and you know Siniki I'm sure would like to train as well. So we can yes. in part with our 8,000 and more members in the future. Yeah. Baka we can build something. Pa. Sige pa, baka we can meet it. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you sa lahat. I think we're we're good na po, Doc Nikki, uh, Ma'am Queenie. May last, may, may last request, Doc. Picture taking. Picture. Just a photo. Sige, game. Picture taking. Ano mag-take the photo screenshot? Ano mag-take the photo screenshot? Ano mag-take the photo screenshot? Screenshot na kayo, kayo na. Oh, na. Video. Ako na. Okay. Hello. Okay, ready? One, two. First slide pa lang po. One, two, three. Smile. And one more? Kasi three pages siya eh. Wait lang po. Naghang pa. 
Nagang. Nagang. Wait lang. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, go. Second slide po. Wait, one. Walang galang. One, two. Hindi sila nag-on ng kamo. Okay. One, two, three. Right. Okay po, last one. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you po so much. Thank you. Happy Bye. Sunday po sila. So, we can send you our, uh, yung, yung certificate. Okay. Oh, thank you po. I, I, and send you po yung recording para ma-post. Oh, yes, it. sure. Thank you so much. Mag-upload siya sa akin. Na. I'll just email it to you po. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. Have a good Sunday po. Bye-bye. Bye po. Thank you so much and thank you po so much.